Now, as soon as a structure begins to lo lose its ability for that to happen is when we begin to see buildings fail or buildings collapse. Now, this can be fire-induced and non-fire-induced. It can be due to faulty construction, faulty design. It can be due from damage from earthquakes or windstorms. All those types of items can affect it. So don't think we're just talking about fire. All right. Now, like I said, we've got this great little model here to help us walk through. And it looks like we've got uh, Homer Simpson here uh, in the middle of our floor of our, our little three-story building here, two-story, three-story building, I'm sorry. All right, now what I, what I want to point your attention to is as he's standing there and the see-through part here is representing our concrete slab. And I just, we took out the, we made it a little see-through so you can see everything that's going on underneath it. And that concrete slab is supported by what we call joists. Let me see if I can, I'm sorry, let me see if I can get you a little shot of what the side view of the joists look like here. It's basically just a web member. We're going to spend some more time in this class talking about that later on, but just know that right now they're just carrying the loads over. Uh, to the larger beams on the edges. And then those beams are carrying them into the columns. So as we can see, the weight of, of Homer Simpson standing in the middle of the floor here is being transmitted through those joists out to the outer beams, okay, these outer guys out here, okay, and then it's coming down the columns where it'll get into the foundation and dissipate out into the ground. That's exactly the way this building was designed to work. And that's how it's, that's, that's, that's the way it needs to be. Now, when we start to see problems with either overloading, you know, maybe Homer Simpson's getting a little chubby, and uh, we've, we've got some issues with, with the load being way too much for what the building's designed to take. Uh, or we see weakening on the instance where we might have, you know, poor installation, or maybe even effects by fire. Uh, all those types of things go back into play, and we're going to talk about how the, the collapse itself progresses. And that progression of collapse is something that's very important to us when it comes time to, to uh, keying in on the indicators of certain uh, collapse mechanisms that we're going to talk about later on in this class as it goes on. Okay, so here now we've, we've lit our building onto fire, on fire, okay? All right, we've got a fire burning on it. looks like the second floor of this structure. And it's uh, going up into the third floor of it, right? Now, we all know from our... Uh, fire behavior classes that are heat and smoke and nasty stuff all rises up. It's going to affect the ceiling. And what we're seeing here is that, that that heat and smoke is all coming up and it's hitting whatever it is that might be carrying that load across. Now in this case we're talking about steel, uh, but it can, it can do the same thing to concrete, to wood, to, to masonry, to anything that we might use to, to carry those types of loads. Okay, Now you see we got the, these green arrows up here and those are just some kind of load. It doesn't matter. They can be bookshelves, they can be desk tables, chairs, they can be, you know, uh, people. It, it, it really doesn't matter at this point in the game. All that you need to know is that there's some load applied to those particular structures. Now, uh, again, not just with steel, but with any type of building material, as we begin to heat it up, the material almost always weakens. Now, as that material weakens, the joist will do what we call, uh, it'll, it'll shed its load. And by shedding its load, I mean that it'll only support a certain amount of load. So its design capacity is that of you know, so many pounds. It can take this many pounds. All right? And we've weakened it to the point where now it takes less than that. Now, as that, uh, as that the amount applied to it becomes more than the amount it can handle, that extra load has to go somewhere else and it'll typically distribute itself out laterally into the other joists. Okay, so it'll, you know, if we, if this middle green arrow here keeps getting bigger, it'll step out, step out, step out until eventually all of them kind of become overloaded. Right, and this is kind of how it progresses and how it starts. And it's also one of the miracles of buildings to tell you the truth is that they have the ability to redistribute this load depending on what the demands of the structure itself may be. Okay, now here's where we see we've, we've got this fire. It's going pretty big. I know we didn't make it any bigger or anything, but just use your imagination here, okay? Now, it's, it's basically, so you notice that we've removed this, this center, this center joist here. It's completely gone. And let's just say that it's, it's, it's heated up to the point where it's ineffective at carrying any load now. Basi basically no strength, right? So all the load that it was supporting now sheds itself out to uh, these joists, right? Where our yellow arrows are. And we might have these green joists out here that are still fairly unaffected by, by the fire itself. Now, 
again, the problem now is, is that these two joists here are becoming weakened by the fire and they're expected to hold all the load that was on this joist already. So you can see that this is starting to become a problem, right? Because now, not only is this joist load sitting on the other joists that are there, these joists are beginning to weaken by the heat of the fire or you know, whatever has caused the weakening of the structure itself. All right, now here is one, one step further, right? We've got the complete failure of the middle. We've got these failed on the outer edges. Now we've got all of that weight that's in this end part here trying to go into these two end joists to come out. Now this is just a recipe for disaster because there's it's no way that everything's designed to hold that type of load and that, that type of moment that they're going to see. Okay? So as this begins to happen, this is the step leading up to, to, uh, to collapse. And we're going to see in these eyes, we're going to see sagging floors, we're going to see you know, uh, bulging walls, we're going to see all kinds of movement out of this structure. And needless to say, anytime a structure is moving, we're getting into trouble pretty quick. All right, now here's where the collapse finally just begins to happen, right? Okay, now we've gotten to the point where uh, the fire has completely overloaded everything, failed all of the joists, and now this load is unable to, um, all, all these joists and, and beams and slabs and all the load carrying systems are now unable to carry the load anymore. And this is where we begin to see the collapse, okay? Now, uh, the, the red arrows you see, um, of course, they're just the same loads, okay? Now, remember, we didn't increase the load any. We didn't decrease the load any, okay? All the load did was redistribute itself. And once that gets to the point that it just can't take it anymore, we see the collapse. Now, again, collapses can be local, as shown in this picture, or they can be global, where the whole building falls down due to this. Now, the difference in local and global collapse is, again, something we'll expand on later on in the class, but the main, you know, a lot of stuff can affect it. What is the building materials made out of? How is it reactive? What type of load carrying system did they use to put the actual structure together? All those types of things are going to play back into how it is that buildings fail.